Hey, what's going on guys? Short Fuse here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your old PS3 fight stick work on PS4 and eventually PS5 as well, using the Brook Fighting Board. This PCB has the best response time in the business, it will cost you around 60 bucks, and it's very easy to mod. You don't need any tools, prior experience, and it's completely solderless. So for $60 give or take, not only you will save tons of money buying a PS4 or PS5 fight stick, but you will also make your PS3 stick as responsive as possible. Although it's very easy to do, I've decided to make this guide to save you time and alleviate any potential trepidations you may have. If you've never done anything like this before, it might be a little intimidating, but this guide is going to be quick and to the point and yet very thorough to properly guide you through the entire setup. Let's begin by taking a look at what we're going to need. PS3 arcade stick, any brand or model will do, Brook Fighting Board PS3 PS4 version, a standard Phillips head screwdriver, a small Phillips head screwdriver, AB USB cable, a pair of scissors, and around 2 hours of your time. That's it, so let's get right to it. We begin by removing the screws in the back of the stick. Now let's take a look inside. Remember, irregardless of brand or configuration, the process is always the same. We begin by unscrewing the original PCB. Next we detach all the cables. If the cables on your fight stick don't have a detachable harness, just cut them at the base with a pair of scissors. Cut everything away from the PCB with confidence. We won't be needing any of that. Now cut off the plastic clips that are tying the various wires together. Now spread the wires coming out of the joystick, the wires coming out of the start select area, and the ones coming from the push buttons. Put everything to the side, and let's begin with the buttons. Each push button will have two wires coming out of it. Cut all 16 wires at the base like so. They might be split into two terminals, one for the upper row, one for the lower row, or they might be screwed into the PCB individually, doesn't matter cut at the base. Now detach one wire from each face button, doesn't matter which, leaving only one attached. Except for the light punch button, leave both detached for the light punch aka square. Now we're going to make a daisy chain for the grounds of each button. Take one wire we detached from the push buttons and cut off the part with the connectors. Leave about two fingers. Now expose about two fingers of copper on the remaining piece of wire. Use your scissors to make a dent and twirl them around to remove the plastic coating. Do this for each side. Now take another wire that we previously detached from the push buttons and repeat the process. Cut two fingers where the connector is. Strip each side of the remaining wire.
Now you should have two strip tip wires and two connectors. Expose around one finger of the wires coming out of the connector. Do the same for the other one. Now take the two exposed ends and wrap them helically around each other like so. The end result should look like this. Now repeat the process and interweave the wire with the connector into it. Wrap it around, pack it tight. Use some electrical tape to mask it. Don't worry too much about this. This isn't to keep it tight and compact. It's just to ensure the copper hairs don't touch each other or the metallic bottom cover of the stick once you pack it all in and close the vice stick. Repeat this process seven times. You should have seven connectors and one exposed wire on each extremity of the daisy chain. One exposed end will go into the ground of the PCB and the other exposed end will go on one of the wires we left on the light punch button. Face button grounds are done. That was the hardest and most time consuming part. Now let's locate the grounds of the options buttons. The Quamba Q4 has the select, mode, turbo and PS button on the same terminal so they have a common ground. Separate and cut the clump of wires at the base and locate the one labeled GND, stands for ground. If you have any buttons that stand on their own, in my case the start button on the side of the stick, take one of the wires coming out of it, strip it and interweave it with the ground. Detach or cut at the base any unnecessary bells and whistles. For example, the Q4 has a terminal labeled LED for the activity lights in the front of the stick and a microphone jack. Both of these can be removed.
Now let's take a look at the joystick. Final step, cut the wires sticking out of the joystick at the base. Now when it comes to the joysticks, there's some discrepancies with the color coding. The schematics may be different based on model, year of production, brand, etc. But no worries, we will test it later and make adjustments. For now, follow my standard schematics. What we know for sure for any joystick is that the black one, the one at the bottom, is the ground. So now we know the location of all three grounds. Let's start connecting them. Take the daisy chain from before. Take one wire from the light punch button and strip it. and attach one end of the daisy chain to it. Now attach the next connector to the empty spot on the button next to it, which is medium punch. Next one in button three, heavy punch. Next one in button four, three punches. Next one goes down to the three kick button, then to heavy kick, then to medium kick, then to light kick. The order doesn't really matter. And now we will plug the last bit of the daisy chain into the PCB. Locate the terminal that says GND and plug it in. There's four of them, so it doesn't matter which GND you plug it in. If it doesn't slide in, use the small screwdriver to loosen the screw. Twirl the exposed wire and fashion a little hook out of it. Now screw it in the terminal tightly. Try to pull on the wire to make sure it's secured. Now let's move on to the second ground. This is the one that comes from your options buttons plus standalone start button. Remember we twirled them together before. Repeat the process and stick it into another terminal labeled as GND. Doesn't matter which one. Now the final ground, the black wire coming out of the joystick. Strip it, twirl the copper, make it into a hook, and stick it into another ground terminal on the PCB. Now that we have connected all the grounds, we simply attach each remaining wire to the corresponding button on the PCB. They are all labeled so you will know exactly what goes where. The first empty slot after the GND is L2, which is kick button 4. So simply take the wire from the L2 button and stick it into the L2 terminal. Now 
Next one is R2, which is heavy kick. And here we notice a pattern. They go diagonally from left to right on the bottom row, and then again from left to right on the top row. But anyway, just read what the PCB markings say and wire the corresponding button into it. After the four kick buttons, there's gonna be a terminal designated for another ground. So skip that one and then plug the four punch buttons. Now that we're done with the face buttons, let's move on to the options button. Now, of course, since we are modding a PS3 fight stick, the buttons will be different. The PS4 has an option button and a share button. So now you can decide on your own which buttons will do what. For example, I decided that my mode button will now function as the option button. So I locate the mode button on the PCB and plug it into the options terminal. This is all up to you. You decide what is more convenient for you and where you want them. So strip it and screw it in. Same as always. Repeat the process for the turbo and PS button on your fight stick or any other buttons you may have. And now comes the final part. The joystick. Follow the schematics and you should be fine. If the movement will be reversed for some reason, you can always unplug them and reassign them to the correct terminal after we test it. So, black wire coming out of the joystick goes into the GND on the PCB. Green goes into direction left. Yellow one goes into the direction right. Orange goes into the direction down. Red goes into the direction up. Now plug a A, B, USB cable into the PCB and you're done. Time to test it. Turn on your PS4, press whichever button you assign to the PS button to activate the stick. Go into a game, I suggest Street Fighter V because it's got a nice 3 kick, 3 punch setup and input display. If you follow the tutorial correctly, everything should be working perfectly. Now simply attach the fighting board PCB to the chassis. Run the cable out of the stick. And reattach the bottom panel. But before you do that, just make sure that no wires are exposed. If any exposed wire makes contact with the metallic part of the bottom panel, it might trigger a signal. So if for example in practice mode you see a character spam a medium punch or something on its own, that could be the reason why. Now the very last thing you're going to do is plug the fight stick into your PC and update the firmware. I will leave a link in the description that will take you directly to the Brook website's download page. Pick your fighting board from the list, minus PS3, PS4 Plus, and download the program for either Mac or PC. Extract and download into a folder. Run the program as administrator by right clicking on it. Now it will prompt you to press and hold the share plus PS button on your fight stick. Keep holding them and plug in the fight stick. So press and hold whichever buttons you assign to be share and PS and plug it in. Then you start the update and in a few seconds you're done. There's going to be a future update that's going to allow you to use the fight stick with a PS5 as well. So for around 60 bucks, you can now turn your PS3 fight stick into a stick that will work on PS3, PS4, and soon PS5 as well. Not to mention, you will have the fastest response time in the business. Money well spent, and very convenient to have three generations of consoles all in one fight stick. Alright guys, that's gonna be it for today. I hope this tutorial was helpful. As always, if you run into any problems or have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.